G'day folks. So today, let's talk about Winston Peters. Just make sure we can see Mr. T Chewbacca of the Resistance. Whoa! Um, <laughs> I love this t-shirt. Okay, no, anyway, let's get serious. Go straight on. Go for straight face, man. It's politics. It's hard not to laugh. Um, especially when you're talking about the biggest joke of them of them all, Winston bloody Peters, the turncoat king. Now, I'm not going to give you everything about Winston today because who's got the time? Um, but these are just some of the bullet points. So uh, in the 1990s, one of the things that Winston Peters kind of claimed a lot of claim to was the fact that white collar crime um, was doing tax evasion. He made himself a big hero on the back of the wine box inquiry, which was the leaked papers uh, linked to the close friends of the Rogernomics Labour, that's the fourth Labour government, the close friends of the Rogernomics Labour government, uh, Faye Rich White. Um, now, the, the wine box inquiry in terms of the book that I wrote, State Secrets, which then turned around and used that to basically demonstrate the money laundering taking place in the Pacific and places like Nawi, Vanuatu, um, and all shenanigans, the um, coups in Fiji, the gold mining in, in PNG, and um, basically, it was my book take on the wine box inquiry in terms of how all this tax evasion was all linked into all this destabilization and basically organized mass money laundering, which bear in mind at the time, what we were told was a conspiracy theory and not happening. Um, we know better now. So 30 years later, uh, you actually look, go back and you look at that situation and you've got Winston Peters leaking the data, but the information's actually come from George Cootie, who's one of the key players on the eight, um, firms, like I can even remember that, as ASAC Trust, I don't know, Paul but uh, the, the main thing is these were the intermediates um, between the people that were laundering the money and the islands, and they would basically would be washed through there. So George Cootie went to work for those guys. Um, when all the stuff came out about the Paradise Bay, the... Uh, Anyway, so he was working for there, and he was one of the guys that the um, serious Ford office swooped on to get um, these wine box inquiries that have been the leaked details of how the banks like the BNZ, Roger Douglas, um, founder of the ACT Party, um, was then in charge. Um, Faye Rich, I said the very close relationship between Faye Rich White and, and Roger Nomics, with Faye Rich White also being partners on that bank and advisors to the New Zealand government, who then advised to sell off New Zealand Railway, which they then bought, um, and then on and on and on. I mean, it's a huge sort of saga that, um, you know, it's like you pinch yourself sometimes when you read and go, well, did this really happen? Um, so once made his big fame, but it was actually the papers would have come from either George Cootie or John Warburton. John Warburton uh, was a member of the Gang of 20, a very prolific uh, gang of white-collar criminals that were exposed by Justice Department investigator Keith Peterson. Uh, politicians said, that's not happening, had him fired, um, Waitaki Tourism Development Board, which involved the Murray Loans Trust, and again, Winston Peters surfing around the edge, making claims and playing sides off e against each other. Uh, turned out there were happenings, but did Keith get his job back? No, no, they got rid of that part. The Justice Department no longer did uh, white collar crime. They set up the Serious Fraud Office, which was uh, Neil uh, Warwick Reed was appointed in charge of that, but he never quite got the job because he actually got arrested in Hong Kong because it turned out he was working for the Triads. And all of most of the SFO had actually come from that whole group. Hong Kong magistrate had huge questions about, you know, people who used to look at them sideways and go, how did the hell used to hire these guys? And there still are huge questions about the what I like to refer to as the Serious Fraud Office. Um, so that was the that was the the wine box stuff, and then of course Winston jumped on the fringe movement of the left, which was all part of the libertarian movement. Uh, the, generally, what that meant wasn't just Winston; the libertarians were doing the same thing as moving on to fringe movements, realizing they're really good for creating cascade movements. These are um, you know uh, pop up movements that can create a swell, which generates a lot of um, popularity and noise, which the swing voters are then drawn towards, which in tight elections can really allow you a, a good opportunity to make a comeback, uh, like Winston is the king of or um, uh, basically, you know, tilt the other side out so you can get that one or two seat majority. Bringing in things like demographics and marketing and data um, have just made this no longer an art form. It's, it's becoming a very precise science. And that's why we can see in 2020, Winston Peters was, of course, one of the people to hire these people, Cambridge Analytics, the dodgy people that basically helped uh, Donald Trump and Boris Johnson get involved. Remember, again, bear in mind that... Um, 
uh, I always think is quite funny because all the people that are very much okay with the vaccine administration are anti-Trump and anti-Boris Johnson up until the point that these guys sign off a data that says, no, we can't show you all the ingredients is, and no, if something goes wrong, you can't sue us. At that point, suddenly people are okay with this. You know, I, I don't get it personally. But anyway, that's another topic anyway. Um, I'm not saying I'm anti that particular subject. I'm just anti the the steps of logic that are going through when people are making their bad, 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 no, we're okay with this. Okay. Um, so that was Winston Peters with the... Um, the 1080, yes, he, but he went to the 1080, got involved, suddenly absolutely supported it, um, supported all industry that were really pro-TPPA and the idea that allowed them to actually do even more 1080, more particular, any poisons they want, uh, got right behind that situation. Uh, then he did the same thing, he said he was against the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, and then, of course, once he got elected, he turned around and said, oh, no, I'm OK with this new revamped version on the TPA, the CPTPP, even though Professor Jane Kelsey points out it's got exactly all the nasty clauses which allow corporates to have more power and is largely driven by Davos. Go back to an article by Scoop 2013. It talks about New Zealand leaders going to Davos to uh, meet um, Davos members to actually orchestrate and uh, the, the regulation of the TPA, which is, again, all of this idea that corporations globally have more power than the actual sovereign citizens. Uh, or, you know, forget sovereign, just the citizens. Um, so Winston Peters now says he's against Davos, but he's actually now for TPA. But you can't be both, Winston. You're either anti-TPPA, which makes you anti-Davos, or you're anti-Davos, which makes you anti-TPA. But the moment you're pro the TPPA, you're actually pro Davos because they actually work lockstep in with each other. You know, that's that's the way that Winston plays. He always relies on you not reading the fine print. So he did that with TPPA. Then, of course, there was, of course, going back to the wine box inquiry, was um, the partners of Faye Rich White included um, in a little company called Prop Bank, which was a Russian tax haven bank laundering money for Vanuatu, which I reported on, which apparently wasn't going on until all of these arms turned up uh, in, in North Korea on the back of an Antonov uh, leased New Zealand company, like, you know, just like the two books I'd written about and photographed and documented company files, like, you know, only 20 and 10 years beforehand, repeatedly, and been told, oh, no, that's not happening. Suddenly, the overseas new me media reports on it. Suddenly, our media accepted this was actually taking place. But when, so, so Rock Bank was doing all this stuff, but they were also partners with Wellnet Holdings, which was a big Chinese metal conglomerate, um, which partnered with Faye Richwhite. So it was Prop Bank, um, uh, Faye Richwhite, and Bayo Teo in Wilnet Holdings. Bayo Teo is David Mace, the accountant who used to work on the Karen fraud case in Hong Kong. So we go back to that whole Hong Kong SFO dilemma um, as a liquidator. And we find out more and more about well, not all liquidators and auditors are created uh, equally. Then he went to work for Ernst & Young, and then after that, he became the handpicked by uh, Kofi Annan to be the um, man overseeing the Food for Oil program. That was the aid to Iraq, which only aid was allowed. They weren't allowed to import, export. Well, um, there were trade restrictions, but there were certain amount of aids that would come in to the country for aid, which were then used for kickbacks to buy Russian arms, which were then laundered through Pacific banks. Again, all the things I have been saying for freaking decades all out there, all provable, comes into New Zealand. Um, Winston Peters, the foreign minister, says, oh, no, no, the, the, we weren't involved at all. Turns out Transparency International comes back and says, do it again, Winston, because in actual fact, um, you didn't even, nobody even looked at the primary documents, the Vulcan documents, which actually list who the tenders were, which does include Food for Oil, Pro, um, the Fonterra, um, lots of other New Zealand companies. Again, people like David Appleby, New Zealand Waste Technology, David Appleby was the original accountant, for Ron Renwald, which was tied up with the Murray Loans, Wataki Development Trust. So we, again, re repetition of names over and over again. Gang of 20, Warburton John, George Coody. These names keep coming back from the wine box to the Paradise Papers to the Panama Papers. It's, you know, and our New Zealand politicians keep going, nothing to see. Oh, we'll fix it up. And then what will they actually do is John Key looks at the situation of, of these uh, Ru the Russian Antonov 2009 with all the New Zealand guns in it, and it turns out there's, you know, there's a, there's a, um, uh, nominee companies are using New Zealand to launder money through, just as I've been saying. He says, we'll write a report into it. That's all they do. They write a report. Then they turn around and have a later inquiry when it turns out that actually there's 64,000 names, New Zealand's name 64,000 times, and he gets the West back and people involved in actually who are being named in the Paradise Papers to investigate themselves. It's just a freaking farce. 
which Winston's going all the time. So yeah, the wine box inquiry, uh, so the food for oil, um, no, 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 there's nothing nothing wrong here. So Transparency International says, do it again, Winston. Winston comes back and says, oh, yes, sir, I've talked to the SFO and I've talked to the New Zealand police. Um, they've had, they had a probe and they're going to be looking in. We're going to have a probe. We're going to look into it. That's another great line. And then you never hear the results of the probe ever again. Because there wasn't one. And I know this for a fact because I rang uh, here the church, I think it was, of the, um, regardless, it was the police liaison officer. I have a file of it in my file somewhere. And they said, well, it never actually happened. We never got actually asked to do that probe. And she was very embarrassed about it. And like, this is the, the Food for Oil program. It's the story that won't die. Um, won't this thing ever go away? No, because it's never been investigated. So things keep popping back up. That's the whole. That's my whole point. We don't investigate these things, so they happen again and again and again. And Winston's always in the centre wall circling around it. So... Uh, and the SFO, of course, being the SFO, when you actually made an inquiry to them, they just didn't actually report on it. And, of course, one of the SFO uh, people there now is actually co-owner of the uh, – one of the big blogs, the, it's the Daily Blog? I think it's Daily Blog. Um, it's one of the major blogs. So, And the point is they've received $55 million in government funding. And now these are the same people that are now apologists. They've been around and suggest that something like BlackRock Corporation is dodgy. They go, oh, the conspiracy theory – well, you, 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 they're not a credible voice because they've got their hand out from the corporate sector and they're part of the same gravy train circling the, the wagons around and around again and again, repeatedly, repeatedly playing the same 12-step dance that we saw from Keith Peterson and the Gang of 20. Then we saw being played out fiascically with the Winebox Inquiry and then we saw for the Paradise Panama Papers and we're seen for the Paradise Papers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, in relation to what... Actually, we don't learn from our lessons here in New Zealand. Um, so that was Winston Peters with that. And of course, Proc Bank Ross, director of that was Ross Morant, the arms dealer. I say arms dealer because he tried to make purchase weapons to sell overseas um, on parliamentary leader because he was then an MP for National MP before he became right of centre, setting up the right of centre party. Um, and was also basically involved in recruiting mercenaries, Ross Morant. And before that was the head of the South African rugby um um, uh, police uh, against the people against the protest tour, uh, the tour in 1981. Um, his Minto Bar Salt was, was battened, what was called a Minto Bar Salt for $25,000. And Ross Morant then turned around after all of that, went on to be the bag man, basically collecting donations from people like Villa Fisheries um, and other, other fishery networks, very famous tallies specifically for donations for New Zealand First. And while Winston Peters was getting Ross Morant to be his researcher and an anti-investigation corruption into all these major fishing names, which he promptly cleared. And this was all while Ross Morant, who was partners with Vela Fisheries, was working out of Vela Fisheries' office. And now he's become sort of a darling of the new um, the, the new woke. They've completely, completely believed that the, the leopards changed its spot. Last time I saw Ross Morant, who still admits he's working with the same shady Eastern European ex-KGB people that he set up the bank prop bank with. Um... He was basically running around telling the gangs that they should get involved, become more politically involved and um, basically encouraging them to, into becoming, um, making New Zealand politics become like Australian politics with how you see the painters and dockers. So again, a mischief making at its finest, which is you know what he said he promised to do with Cambridge Analytics, to create mischief for mayhem. And anybody wrote that off in 2020 and I said, no, 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 boys and girls. That's the recon. They're doing the same thing that John Key did with the Hollow Men, which was Nicky Hager, uh, Hager, Hager, sorry, Nicky, um, puts in his book The Hollow Men. They did a recon. Lose an election to gain two elections, but first you've got to do your homework. And, and Winston's doing the same thing here. So that's why he's now sitting at 6.2%. And that'll probably go up as the swing voters actually get um, moved along by the cascade movements, which are being promoted by all these online army of trolls uh, online, which people like Winston Peters um, have, you know, gone tut 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 while they saddle up to Cambridge Analytics at the same time. Not that they're the only ones that are doing that, by the way. <laughs> um, Winston Peters, okay, so yep, New Zealand First, so you get all the New Zealand First Foundation donations, you get the ties to clean them. The point is about Winston is that this is a guy who likes, you can be really seen down in the old days of the Green Parrot, hanging out with people like Peter Tallies, his mates in the tobacco company, the alcohol company. Winston is just a freaking opportunist. You vote a vote for Winston is a there's a vote for Winston. 
and he will do whatever he wants, he needs to, to gain power. And that's what Winston's all about and has always been all about. Anyway, just thought I'd actually share you that, remind you a few of those things about uh, Winston and the Wine Box Inquiry, Winston and Ross Morant, Winston and 1080, Winston and the TPPA, Winston and his and his fishery inquiries, Winston and the Food for Oil, very, very much the Food for Oil, because he said, he said, came back, said, oh, no, no, we've had an investigation. Actually, there never was an investigation. And that Food for Oil program, which links to people like David Mace, which then links to, again, back to the Paradise and Panama Papers. So all these things, which, and then you've got Powdergate, all these things which at the time in the 80s and 90s we didn't understand. And when people like me came along and said, well, well this is what's going on, and people go, well, who the hell are you? Um, dismissed. But ultimately, history has actually vindicated me at the end of the day um, and pretty much has shown that, you know, Winston's not the hero of the wine box that he actually makes out. 